Hago la presentación de David Bolsonella, es profesor asociado de Ingeniería Química de la Universidad de Verona, Italia. Su principal campo de investigación es la digestión anaerobia. Actualmente está inmerso en seis proyectos europeos que tratan sobre la digestión de residuos orgánicos y fangos para la recuperación de hidrógeno y metano, así como también de otros compuestos orgánicos. Es autor de más de 75 publicaciones de, en esta materia. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation having me. I would be happy to share some uh, experience we had during the last years in the field of anaerobic codigestion, where codigestion here is large plus food waste mainly. Uh, in fact, if we have a look to what we normally found around, let's say, Germany, Austria, and Italy, where we have more or less the same uh, uh, background in terms of regulation, where uh, you put together waste with waste, but if you have something from the agriculture sector, it's remaining in the agriculture sector, so you have a complete separation of these two streams. Uh, what we can found normally is the anaerobic co-digestion of sludge plus food waste, where food waste can be the organic fraction coming from municipal solid waste, separate collects, like in this case, which is more or less very similar to what you have in household restaurants, canteens. You have residual material from markets with all the problems uh, with the presence of inner material and uh, uh, inert things inside. And after that, you have food processing waste, uh, where the problem is that sometimes it's waste, sometimes it's the byproducts. When it is a byproduct, very probably, uh, the final solution will be animal feeding. So it's not available actually uh, for feeding anaerobic digestion for bioenergy purposes. So there are different markets, different situations. Uh, I mean, there is a lot of organic material out there, but you can't have it all. Okay, there are already markets established and there is a cost. So sometimes it's not easy uh, to get the material. So if I look back to the experience we had in the 90s, like Treviso, you mentioned it before, uh, the problem was that it was quite complicated, actually. We have a, you know, a crushing, a disrupting of the bags. We have the removal of metals. We had the removal of inner materials uh, with a drum sieve and we have a wet refine and so on. So it was quite complicated energy and time consuming and actually all the people working in wastewater demand plants they were not very happy to work with material what happened in the very last years uh, very likely what happened in my region which is the veneto region capital venice uh, very similar to what happened actually in austria and germany the same trends uh, we introduced a very deep door-to-door -door collection of waste uh, so you have a separation of plastic, organic, and so on. And what the result was that we have a separate collection which is over the 70% in this moment of different uh, streams of material. Second, very important point, uh, apart from the uh, separate collection, is that the quality. If you look at the organic material we have now, the percentage of non-compostable material, so let's say not organic material in the food waste we dispose in our households, is as low as 2%. So basically, it's organic material. What's the technological consequence of this is that we have very simple machinery, very simple technologies in this moment for the pre-treatment, preparation of the food waste before the loading of the anaerobic digestion section in wastewater treatment plants. If you look at Treviso, this was the old one, uh, completely disappeared here, uh, doesn't exist anymore. What we have now uh, is that the waste managing company they get a machine like this, which is just a screw press in the end. What you obtain here is on one side the inorganic material, the plastic, the residual material you have in the bags of the organic, and the other stream you have is a liquid, which is a clean liquid. You can put it in a truck, and the truck is going to the anaerobic digestion section of the wastewater treatment plant. So it's very simple. And all the people in the waste sector is working with waste and they are happy. All the people in the wastewater sector, they are water with a liquid and they are happy as well. So it's something you have to keep in mind when you try to put together the two things. Uh, another very interesting option is Rovereto, is the Trentino province, north part of Italy on the Alps. What they did, this is the old wastewater treatment plant, uh, 90,000 people equivalent, just to give you a number, uh, they add this area here for the treatment of the organic material coming from households of the city. What you have inside there, well, you discharge the material, you have one single machine 
which is a hammer mill with a siever, removing the inner material coming from the bags, or let's say you have some, I don't know, maybe a fork can be inside sometime, or a can, something like that can happen. Uh, after that, a hydrocyclone for the removal of very fine inner material, like glass or ceramic or sand, or in area like this one, where you use a lot of seafood, you can have shells. For example, the residual part of paella, the pescado, for example, is full of shells, something you have to keep in mind. So after that, you have the storage, and you pump during a period of, let's say, 16 hours up to 20 hours per day, because this material is extremely biodegradable, so the biogas production is just a flash. So you need to uh, load the digester for a prolonged time during the day just to avoid any uh, particular peak. So this is the only machine, actually, a hammer mill. Uh, this is the sieve, the drum sieve you have inside. If you open the machine, you have the hammers, just rotating and smashing of the material, and the sieve here is removing the plastic, basically, and the inner material from all the organic, which is going to the digester, okay? What you need, of course, is a minimal dilution. Normally, as minimum, is 400 liter of water, or recycling water of effluent of the, the wastewater treatment plant uh, per ton of material treated. So. This is the material you have in the end, the inner material, which is quite clean. And of course, in any case, this one is going to the land filling. So this is the fine removal. And what you have here is the washing of the inner just to recover other organic material in case you have inside. If you, in the hydrocyclone, you have some precipitation of organic, you can then uh, wash it in order to have clean sand, which can be recycled and organic material which can, in any case, digest it together with sludge. So the net result in, in Rovereto treating 10 tons of organic material per day was that they double the biogas production. If we compare what they have in 2014 to what they have now, well, basically they passed to 1,000 something to more or less 3,000 cubic meters per day just using 10 tons per day of organic material, which is not huge actually, it's just a village. Uh, so, in terms of energy, uh, Fernandez Polanco introduced this problem this morning, which is very important actually. Uh, when treating on is large, in this case, we were already at 50% recovery of the energy in the plant, just because they are using two capstone turbines with a 50% efficiency in terms of energy production, so it's quite high actually. Normally you are down to 30% energy recovery when you treat only sludge in a normal combined heat and power production. But what they have now is a 85% coverage of the energy request. So they are going towards the energy autarky of the plant actually. So they don't need more or less to have extra energy for uh, for the labor, so for the for the uh, uh, operation of the plant, actually. So in terms of MALA balance, uh, we have to keep in mind, if we look at the very numbers during the last two years, uh, if we treat 10 tons of organic material, so starting from the bottom here on the left, in any case, you have two ton of inner material, which will be disposed. So it's a 20%, it's not nothing. Uh, it's a cost in any case, it's going to the landfill, it's something you have to keep in mind. It's an extra cost for you. After that, you go to the digestion, of course you double the biogas production, 100% more biogas, 100% more energy, more or less, but of course you have one ton more of produced sludge, okay? You have some inert fines coming into the digester, you improve the production of sludge, also because in any case you are introducing COD, nitrogen and phosphorus in the plant, coming back to the wastewater demand line. So in any case, you are improving, increasing the production of sludge, something you have to, to keep in mind. So putting all together and putting in numbers, which is euros, which is probably one of the most important things for operators, uh, what are the benefits? Of course, I have a get fee. The get fee in this moment in Italy, at least the northern part of Italy, is between 16 and 80 euro per ton. Okay, so we, this is what you get to accept the food waste from the uh, municipality. On the other hand, 
you are producing for per one ton of material between something between 140 180 cubic meter of biogas more or less let's say that you convert to 300 kilowatt hour energy okay which means that the minimum is in this moment 90 euro per megawatt hour which is more like the cost of energy in turn if, if you have an incentive you can go up to 160. So this makes a difference, of course. If you have benefits, incentives for the production of renewable energy, of course, uh, the, the, the economic scenario is changing dramatically, okay? But uh, at the, as a minimum, in this moment, we have 90 euro per uh, megawatt hour. So that means that one ton is producing 30 euros, more or less. So the benefits is this one plus this one is 100 and something per ton. On the other hand, you have the cost. And the cost is the fact that you have some nitrogen coming in with the food waste and you have to treat it because it's coming back with the rejects water to the water line. Of course, you can have a step in the middle. You can have a, you know, a, a SBR or a Nolan, a Sharon or whatever. There is a, a number of fancy and sexy possibilities to remove nitrogen. But of course, it's a cost in any case uh, to implement. Uh, so let's say that the cost is around 3-5 euro per kilogram of nitrogen. You have phosphorus. It can be 6-8 six six, per kilogram of P if you remove it chemically. And after that, you have the inner material increasing the final sludge disposal. So it's again a cost. So I'm not mentioning the fact that you are increasing the sulfid in the biogas. And it's a cost again. Uh, when, when it is... Let's say almost winter, hey, you have a cabbage and these kind of things. The sulfur is increasing dramatically. So uh, something you have to keep in mind. You have to, to cope with this or you damage the CHP unit. So in the very end, if you, if you put all together the red costs, more or less, you are destroying the gate fee. Okay? Let's say that you are up to 50 euro per ton. So, okay, there is benefit. Uh, the benefit is mainly related to the biogas production. Of course, if you have an incentive... For the production of renewable energy, okay, it's quite interesting. There is money coming in. On the opposite, uh, you have to keep in mind that, uh, okay, there is an equilibrium. You have to, to keep attention if everything is actually uh, sustainable or not. In any case, my point is that uh, you are giving the right solution for the managing of food waste and organic waste in your area which is quite important. I mean, if the other option is landfilling, of course, this one, in any case, the best one, even if you have to pay for, uh, of course, from an environmental standpoint, it is in any case a solution. So last point, but very interesting, uh, this little white dust is plastic. So in the final sludge, ready for disposal, uh, you, are, you can't talk about biosolids in this moment because there is no one accepting this material for uh, land for the use on fields so what you have what you need here is or a sieving system in the digester to remove the inert the floating inert during the liquid phase or you have to cure this one uh, after or before the composting unit but in any case you need something to remove the, the plastic dust uh, just to recover this material after that of course you have a very good quality material ready for the fields of course uh, provided you have a market for compost for example in our case the cost of compost now is something like three euros per tons so it's basically for free uh, so it's not really a, an economic coming income so Putting all together, uh, of course, co-digestion uh, of sludge plus food waste is an option. Clearly, you have an increase in biogas production. You have get fees coming in. You have a clear economic sustainability of the process. But you have to consider you have some extra nutrients to recycle to the wastewater cement plant. You have a sludge production increase. And of course, you have some residual plastic and inert in your final sludge, something you have to solve. So in general, my my take-home message is, okay, you can consider co-digestion is one of the best options probably to, uh, let's say, on one hand, manage the food waste and organic waste in your given territory. On the other hand, you have economic in incomes, but put all together on the table. Consider all the cons determined by the, the food waste process. Thank you.